talk for a minute about just getting started in preparedness. Where you start, how to start, you know, what, to, what you think about. Uh, president Benson, uh, a long time ago when he was the president, he spoke at General Conference and he talked about um, food storage and preparation, things like that. And he said, forgotten by some of our members is an underlying principle of the church welfare plan that no true Latter-day Saint will, um, while physically able, voluntarily shift from himself the burden of his own support. Um, H. Burke Peterson said uh, in, in 75 at that time, there was only about 30% of the church that had even too much supply of food. And so I mean, we, can, we can drill into the statistics and the, the, the point is being made uh, that this is a serious time. President Kimball at a conference uh, looked at uh, Sister Spafford, who was the Relief Society president, and kind of made the comment that, that there's going to come a time when there's no stores. And, um, it, it just sets the stage that we need to be uh, mindfully preparing and being prepared for whatever it is that we have going on. We encourage members worldwide to prepare for adversity in life by having a basic supply of food, water, and some money and savings. And then President Benson uh, said this, um, and the bottom here is, is what, he, what I want to emphasize. He says, I emphasize the most basic uh, principle, home production and storage. And then he asked the question, have you ever paused to consider or to realize what would happen in your community or nation if transportation were paralyzed, if you had a war, depression? Um, how would you and your neighbors obtain food? How long would the corner grocery store stay open or the supermarket? And it's just, it's, just, it's a what if. And when I was earnestly beginning my own preparations, that was the thought that kept coming to me was like, what if, or what if? Because if, if you don't know what um, to do, or where to start, that's a good jumping off spot is to ask those questions. Well, what would happen if? What would happen if? And so we put together some steps for you to consider in terms of where to start. Um, we've, we've done some of these surveys before and probably the number one response that I've received is, um, I don't know what to do, I'm confused, I don't know where to start. Following that was, I don't have room for storage. I, don't, I wouldn't know where to put it. I mean, those are the objections that come up. And so, um, how to approach preparation. Number one is to follow the spirit, your common sense, and, and your promptings. Now, this is going to be different for each one of us because we all come from different places. Follow the counsel, but realize the Lord, the church, doesn't command in all things. They teach um, principles and respect your agency. Um, spiritual and temporal preparations go hand in hand. We, we kind of have this thought, well, if I'm spiritually prepared, I'll be taken care of. And that's not really what we've been told. And we can't just be a prepper either and just have temporal preparations because we need to have a balance with spiritual preparations. Uh, become familiar with what the prophets have told us and consider various sources of information. And then again, ask the what if questions. And that's, that will get you jump started as to, as to know where you're going to go. And again, these are the what ifs. It's like, what happens if there's no power, no transportation, no communication? How would you cook if you didn't have electricity? What are you going to do about sanitation and hygiene? What about different seasons? You know, if it's hot or cold, uh, you just kind of go through that list and, um, and start to appreciate that there's a lot of scenarios that could play out. And the question is, are you ready? And what would you do? And it includes everything. You know, we, we talk about food storage, and tonight we're just going to hone in on water, but <coughs> food's just one part of it. There's how are you going to stay warm, how do you clothe yourself, how are you going to cook? If there's no fuel, how do you cook food, warm food, and so forth? But the point is, is that that list is endless, and it can get really frustrating. You can get swallowed up in that, and that's not our purpose. <coughs> you just start where you're at, and, and eat that elephant, as they say, one bite at a time. So... A simple formula, at least as I think it through, is to know your why, which is why I put the slides up before, is because um, why are we doing this? And if, if you're not really in touch with that, if you're feeling a little ambivalent about that, you kind of have to drill into that and just say, well, why are we doing this? Why is this important? What would happen here? Yeah. And then I would suggest that you start making lists. And this isn't necessarily inventory lists, although that's helpful. It's the lists back on the what ifs. Like, um, what kind of foods do I need? How would I cook it? Or how would I heat myself? Um, uh, heat my, my home? Or, or uh, 
Um, how would I do my shelter uh, considerations or clothing considerations? In each one of those categories or subcategories, you can just build long lists. You know, I, I've got a, I've got probably a, a 700 rows on an Excel spreadsheet where I just kind of went crazy and I just brainstormed. And the value of that list is that you can then take it and you can prioritize it. You can say, now of all these you know, hundreds of things that we could worry about and obsess over, what's most important? What's most urgent? What's, uh, what, what does my family you know, need and so forth? Because everybody's coming from a different place. But that's where, in my opinion, that's where the spirit comes in. Because you're going to get prompted and you're going to say, I think what we need to do is this or this. And the other thing that it helps is that when you have that list in your mind, and you're out and about, or you're shopping, or you're at a thrift store, or something like that, and you run across something, instead of just picking it up and saying, oh, that's kind of silly, you're looking at it with different eyes. You're thinking, could I use that? It's something as simple as a, a hand egg beater, you know, the non-electric kind of the old days. And then you look at that and you go, who needs that? Well, if there's no electricity or something like that, I mean, you just, so if you can pick it up cheap for a couple bucks at Goodwill, then that might be on your list to consider. But it lets you prioritize, and most of all, with that prioritization, you can then be influenced by the Spirit to be prompted to know what to do for yourself next. The other thing is to learn and get involved. Uh, Google and YouTube are wonderful places to go. This forum that we're creating in the stake is also another one. And we're not the only group, there's others out there. But you get around like-minded people, you get on YouTube and you do a search for water filtration like we're doing tonight, or uh, food storage, or even, you know, some of the women love Pinterest, my wife loves Pinterest. And there's just, there's reams of stuff, information that you can get trained on. Um, you want to learn how to make soap? There's stuff on YouTube. So, so with that said, um, we kind of want to pull this back and say, well, what are, what is our guidance been? So this is off the LDS.org website. I would I would seriously recommend that you go there and that you um, get on that site and read what the simple thing that's rather simple that the brother has put there for us. And the, for as far as food stories, the three things are a three month and long term. Okay, mm -hmm. it wants to focus on the shorter term first. Water supply and have a financial reserve. How much food storage do I need? This is a real simple formula. You start off with one day, times it by seven, that gives you a week. Then you times that by four, and now you've got a month. You times that by three, and now you've got three months. And then you can say, well, now I might need some longer term stuff. But this, this you start where you're at, and you look in your pantry, and you go, what's there? Most of us probably have enough food in our pantry we could survive a week, a month. You know, everyone's different. So if you're looking at, well, do I have a three-month supply? I'd, I'd wager if I was a betting guy that most of us probably have enough food in our home right now that we're, we're not going to die of, you know, of, of starvation in three months' time just because we've got enough crackers or beans or something. <clears throat> <laughs> How much does it cost? <clears throat> is another consideration. We've been we've been advised not to go into debt for you know your year supply or whatever quantity, you know, the whole thing is do it gradually as you go along and don't go to extremes. And so putting that all into one slide, these are the kind of the rules or guidelines to me that are in a summary. And that is don't go to extremes. Uh, other, uh, Cook told us in 16, 2016 General Conference that we shouldn't look beyond the mark when it comes to going to extremes with uh, food storage. Don't go into debt, do it gradually. And think about home production. This is what President Kimball and President Vincent emphasized, is grow your food, produce it at home, put it up, can it. Um, I would add, go to yard sales and thrift sales. I, when I'm doing this, the game for me is I never buy anything at retail. It's always on sale, it's at a yard sale, it's at a thrift shop. Um, and again, that comes from the list mentality, because you know what's on your list. You know how many kids or grandkids you have. You know how many shoes or boots or winter boots or work boots or gloves. I mean, those are all on your list. They may not be high up like other things, but that's where you prioritize and you start working them. Focus on the basics at first. Again, the website, uh, theprovidentliving.org, 
has a great one sheet uh, PDF a handout um, that will give you all the basics that you need. We're talking the staples and, and a little bit beyond the staples of rice, beans, and, and wheat. And then again, don't forget that we have to clothe ourselves and we have energy and shelter needs and so forth. Become spiritually prepared. Um, again, we can't emphasize that enough. Um, that's part of having the Spirit with you. And I think we're going to need that level of protection at some point in time. And so you, hopefully we're all worthy of that. And last of all, don't panic. This isn't about, oh my word, you know, Armageddon's coming and, and um, doomsday -ish kind of stuff. It's like, this, if you are prepared, you shall not fear idea. Um, once you get, in my opinion, once you put your feet on the path of really making some serious efforts to start becoming prepared, I, I noticed that the, the fear, the panic part kind of went away. I'm not ready yet. I will never really be 100% ready. None of us will. But it, there's a peaceful feeling that comes because you know you're working your list. You're working your list. I see people's heads nodding. You know, and that, to me, is just how you do that. So, again, I, I highly uh, encourage you to go to ProvidentLiving.org and um, check it out. There's just a lot of good information there. That's a good starting place. Um, we're going to talk today about water. <clears throat> Any questions about that setup or kind of the rules of engagement or how to start list or anything? Comments? Anybody have comments? <clears throat> well, let's go back here. Pardon? Are you sharing your list? <clears throat> my list is my list. <laughs> and my promptings are my promptings. Well, you can have your promptings. How about the list? <laughs> I'll have to think about that. The, the, the list is, you know, you start with the ten categories. Food, water, clothing, shelter, um, and so forth. And then you go, okay, let's just pick clothing for a minute. Well, what about clothing? We, we got a lot of clothes probably in our closet, but if, if we had to go somewhere or you, know, you start thinking, and I've got 19 grandkids, so my list is more than just for me and my wife. A couple of my kids' families, they're, they're getting along okay, but I still kind of include them. So it's like in clothing, how about warm weather clothing, cold weather clothing? Do they have clothes to sleep in at night? You know, do the babies have diapers? You know, that's kind of a sanitation issue. Uh, do we have work gloves? Uh, do we have sweatshirt? I mean, you just kind of go down this list, and it's it's endless. And that's where the the list, I think, process comes in because then you can sort it, and and it'll switch and it'll flip and it'll change and you'll reorder it hundreds and hundreds of times. There's some chairs up here. Come right on up here and make yourself visible. We're trying to sneak in and not make a spectacle of ourselves, you know? No one knows. So that's my that's my um, excuse. I'm happy to share a list. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but I really encourage. I think the process of actually doing it, and then you start expanding it. You know how you can do sub, you know, sub bullets and so forth. You just kind of start organizing it that way, and all of a sudden this starts to come alive. 